Welcome to the Comic Book Debate Podcast. This is podcast number two. I'm your host and the editor-in-chief of Comic Book Debate, Shiraz Faruqi. And I'm joined, as always, by my brother, Zayan Faruqi. Glad to be here, guys. And Umar Kamal. Hey, everyone. And uh, very excited, very pumped to introduce our first ever guest to the podcast. Uh, This guy needs no introduction. If you're a fan of uh, DC Comics, if you're a fan of the films, you're going to recognize this guy's photos. It's none other than Clay Enos. Well, hello, gang. Very, very honored to be here. Excited to share. Oh, and we're very happy to have you as well. Uh, so I think, you know, we're just going to kick it off uh, right now. And let's start a little bit from the beginning. Let's backtrack with you a little bit. Why don't you tell us wh- how you came into this field? And in, and as a secondary question, what led you into the film industry uh, as that whole package? Well, I, I guess it's, it started early on, you know, as a kid not being a particularly strong the arts called me, right? I was, you, you generally follow the path where you're most encouraged or get the most, the arts were certainly that for me rather than say math, science, English, <laughs> or otherwise. And, and uh, you know, soon enough I was studying and majoring in film and photography in college or university. And, and uh, that really is where we're aligned with you know, I guess I could start to see the rest of my life sketch out that that's what I really wanted to do. Awesome. There was a fair bit of good timing in that the world was really ripe with change, right? As I graduated, Photoshop had just been invented. Oh. The web, and, and I was able to sort of jump on board all that stuff and ride it even till now. Oh, awesome. And, uh, and a lot of, you know, just to follow up. Yeah, you want just go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Just to follow up on that, what led you. Uh, to Warner Brothers was that particularly with uh, when you met Zach or was that beforehand or what how did the start of that partnership come arise well his wife and I went to college together that was at Ithaca College so oh, right. we had that connection oh, wow. and I guess the movie set of any scale was visiting uh, Debbie and Zach on the set of 300 and of course I noticed there was this still photographer on set and it piqued my interest I thought Wow, is that a, that's a career? Like I could I could maybe do that the next time he makes a movie, and uh, uh, that invitation was extended to me with Watchmen, and that's sort of been that's been my gig ever since. Um, you and your field have a great opportunity to see all these iconic heroes on set, and we you know Zach does a great job setting up these iconic looks and uh, sets. You know how how's that experience for you seeing them on set, seeing these heroes come to life? Well, you know it's not just on set. You know, I get to wander around the costume shop. I get to see Michael Wilkinson's sketches. My my first making photographs of anything film related was a meeting of Michael Wilkinson with Zach and Debbie in their offices before Watchmen as as characters I'd not been previously familiar with. Comedian, uh, you know, Silk Spectre were, were being drawn. I, I probably could find those pictures somewhere. And, and little did I know what what I was glimpse of in, in, in capturing that day, yeah, yeah. and how it would frame the next ten years of my life. So, so look, it's it's unbelievable on a lot of levels. It, 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 at times, it's just a job in the sense that I'm I'm just moving around the Superman costume to make sure the light's decent on it, so I can get a picture, so that the toy makers can make a decent toy that doesn't look, you know. That, that mimics the real costume and other times it's just totally awesome as they're standing there oh yeah oh yeah capes on and, and you know you know you know the deal yeah i mean i can't even imagine how it would be you know just seeing even seeing the costumes would be you know i mean for we're, we're all a bunch of fanboys here so it's like even thinking about <laughs> it, it's like wow you know that's an experience uh but you know yeah. have, were you much of a comic book reader as a kid uh were you like introduced to the heroes? I mean, I know we've all seen the iconic films that you know we Superman seventy eight, Batman eighty nine. But uh, what was your introduction to these heroes? You said you weren't familiar with the Watchmen characters, but were you interested or familiar with all these other heroes that you'd eventually get to work with? Sunday comics I would read based on like I like the Family Circus because there was one panel. <laughs> 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 you, you wouldn't have caught me reading a comic book. I'm, honestly, the first comic book I ever read 
which is uh, was Watchmen, and I read it on the airplane on the way to set. Oh wow! It was a pretty so, strong start. Yeah. yeah, definitely is a great introduction into this comic universe. <laughs> it really was, and, and you know, going into that movie, I thought I thought Watchmen would just put an end to this genre. Uh, little did I know, it was just a. It was really. I don't know. I mean, it was pretty well established at that point, but it, everything in my imagining since, because because of Watchmen's sort of rather critical look at this these these costumed misfits and vigilantes, I, I am still sort of pinching myself that that my the next ten years of my life has been taking them all as seriously as I have been. You know, it's, and it's a funny thing about Watchmen that. I mean, I agree with you, but a part of me feels like, you know, it might have been that five, six years too early in a sense that I think the the boom, that golden age of comic book movies where every year there's four entries from different studios. We weren't at that point uh, at the time. I think if now we had Watchmen today, uh, it would completely destabilize how what we think about it, similar to what Deadpool did. In a sense, Watchmen already did it, you know, just like six years prior. Yeah, I mean, timing is everything in this world, and and certainly, I, I would agree with you that there was that also it can't, coming off the heels of uh, of Keith Ledger's of the Joker, like like people couldn't get enough at that point, and we came along with this film that was, you know, it was also marketed like it was going to be another superhero movie, and it and it really isn't. It's a it's a critique and a deep layered look at the genre and so i think it'll always have its you know, uh, again timing is everything yeah, yeah um i just wanted you to kind of talk about how the set you know how, how was the set on watchmen and 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 how was it like the, your first time to photograph all those characters and just your first kind of uh uh well not your first thing i should say that but you know watchmen was uh, kind of put you on the map a little bit so i just wanted you to kind of talk about that yeah, you know, it was it was something that I didn't have a lot of experience in. In fact, it's zero. And so I just came at it like it was some sort of adventure that I would I might as well have been in a, you know, in an exotic hitchhiking road trip or something. Every day there was things there were things to photograph. I mean, I was I I completely exhausted myself, made a ton of mistakes, learned a lot. Um thought I, I never do that again i remember early on we were shooting a scene in a cemetery when when rorschach comes to the grave and it's pouring rain and and that day just happened to be something like 18 hours freezing cold wet and i remember coming home and being like oh my god there's a hundred more of these days coming like what have <laughs> i gotten myself into you know I, I thought hollywood hollywood was this glamorous world of pampered stardom and and we would just, <laughs> was, uh, really. you know, a, a little did I know. But at the end of it, my friends were like, where the heck were you? Like, what, like a, we thought you were, you know, fell off the face of the earth. <laughs> and, and I literally thought, I will never do that again. That, that was just way too exhausting. It was, I, I ran myself ragged. But then, of course, you know, you, your humans are resilient, me included. And and a few books, you know, that beautiful portrait book came out, and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, this maybe it was all worth it. Let's do that again. No, and I'm aware definitely of you know Watchmen yeah, portrait. Let, discuss that a little bit. You know, your Watchmen portraits book. You know, when did you decide that oh, you should take your collect these collection of amazing portraits and photos that you've done, black and white, and all these different types, and you know, put it into a collection. You know, was that you thought of from the start or? after you saw your whole collection you decided that this could be something I could put up? Look, I, portraits are, are the thing I, I was doing and it's and it just was a natural thing to continue to do, especially given the breadth of characters available on Watchmen. Mm -hmm. and, and the, so I was just doing it all along and I kind of, as I was doing it, I would pull out a few selects periodically and I just sort of made it my screensaver on my laptop, you know, and people were digging it. It wasn't my decision to make the book. That's, that's, I'm a work for hire in the legal sense. Those decisions are made by marketing and, and the powers that be and the producers and the, and the filmmakers, mm -hmm. uh, but they saw value in doing something like that. And I wasn't going to stand in the way. Uh, was, in fact, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I, to this day, I'm sort of in awe that that thing is, that thing exists. 
Oh, definitely, and, definitely. And, and really proud. But it wasn't my it wasn't my call and sense to make it a book, but it was just my it's my natural inclination to make portraits when I see amazing characters. Yeah, uh, but yeah, definitely a great way. It was definitely a great way to get your amazing work out there to get it to a large audience for them to be able to see it in a big in a collection together. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. Tell me about it. I mean, look, I it, having made portraits on the street before where I couldn't you know, it wasn't I, I didn't have total commit. You know, they people could pass by all the time and just decline. It was really kind of nice on a movie set where they sort of couldn't say no. <laughs> no I mean, I think <laughs> I got a little no, but I think your natural skill, I think it shines through. I mean, it's come to the point where, you know, uh, if you've been following these films, like you can just tell right away that, no, this is a this is a Eno shot. You know, like, you know, it just without <laughs> especially when it came to these posters, like you already know like this is a Eno shot right here, you know. And you don't even need the confirmation. You already know. So it's come to that point. I think the fans really uh, rallied behind you. And you're basically really part of the DC family, part of the DC legacy in a bigger sense. I mean, you may, definitely made your mark, I would say. Well, that's really nice to say. I mean, it's exciting because I've always thought of photography itself as a kind of conversation between photographer and subject. And so generally, I, that conversation should be consistent. It's one where we're respect is paramount we're sort of honoring the character and honoring all the people that have contributed to that character should be evident and should be sort of held up to observe yeah speaking of honoring a character so let's talk a little bit about man of steel so you were basically tasked with photographing one of the most iconic heroes of all time um in a brand new cinematic universe uh so how was that and how was seeing henry i mean henry cavill in that costume he's literally walking superman um how was that for the first time and uh just go through a little bit of, of man of steel look well i always say that, that that for whatever reason it's obviously cultural bias but there's a couple characters that stand out or yet yeah, no, there's a couple things in people's brains that stand out if you're like a kid from new york like me like the eiffel tower or a santa claus or, you know a few of these things where you you feel like you have an idea in your head whether you've seen them or not Right, and when when Superman with his cape was there, when, when Henry was there, it was like seeing the Eiffel Tower, the Taj Mahal, or or, or Santa Claus. He wanted to sit on his lap, tell him what he wanted for Christmas. <laughs> he, he's really, he, it, it was it was awesome. You know, obviously, I'm old enough to remember Christopher Reeves, but when you when I look at those that portrait of Superman and Henry it I think we really you know Zach really nailed it with this current iteration it's just a it, it's it's really something I mean that's that's what you think of yeah, I, I mean, do I mean in, in that, my, the recesses and my preconceived notions of my brain that's what I think of when I think of Superman and you know I couldn't agree more I mean uh just speaking personally you know I'm like the Superman fanboy of Superman fanboys you know so like it's been my you know uh, favorite character since I don't even remember like since I was born basically it's in my genes you know that I'm a Superman fanboy so you know I grew up with like the cartoons and I, I grew up in the 90s but uh, and in the comics and one of the first comics I read was you know Death of Superman and so immediately you know my perception of Superman it never was this campy idea. Not to say uh, the original movies were uh, campy in a, to a fault. They're not. I mean, they're iconic in their own nature. But when Man of Steel came out, I mean, I finally got the Superman that I read as a kid and the Superman that I watched as a kid. And I feel like um, it really is a testament. And again, just picking backing off of Umar's question, I mean, I can't even imagine what your experience was. I mean you and your team like this is you're reintroducing superman for a new generation but at the same time you're showing superman to the old generation and how how do you like how do you, i know you're not you you're not, i know you just photograph uh photograph these heroes but just from your perspective how much of a challenge is that to for like you said everyone has a preconceived notion of superman uh, no matter where you're from. So how, when you're sitting in your task to create a new Superman, uh, how does that process work? You know, well, look, I, uh, on a lot of levels, as you said, I'm, I was just a photographer. So my, I don't get to, I guess I can't get too hung up on its interpretation. I'll just focus on making a cool photograph, right? 
right? That that to me evokes all of that energy, that the power, all of the the sincerity that's being brought to his portrayal. I just want to make a photo that that does that. Okay, I don't. I, I'm not going to get. You know, I did, I wasn't making costume decisions or even you know hairstyle decisions or anything like that. All I had was Henry in front of me. And, and, you know, I remember making that first image in the safe where, where Henry's been thrown into the safe and he looks up. You know, Zach is standing right next to me as we're making those photographs. That was hardly, you know, a, a solo effort. Of course, and, yeah. And we were, you know, we're, and he's exploring the, the possible stands and things. But I'll tell you right now, Zach had a vision. And it's just incumbent to, on me to, to, to render it accordingly. I... I because I didn't bring a huge bunch of baggage, I really did defer to just my gut and and honoring the character in front of me as I saw him, as Henry was portraying it. You know, everybody's. I can I can take sanctuary a little bit in just knowing I'm among the best professionals in the business, putting out a character that is steeped in tradition, and and, and to be fair, interpretation, right? Like. We, there's Superman has existed a, a hundred different ways over the years. This is just another iteration. Exactly. Yourself. You could take sanctuary in that a little bit. So, and there's this one specific Superman photograph that I want to get your insight on. Uh, I mean, start with Man of Steel. It's this really uh, Alex Ross style. There's like, you see the shadow of Superman. You just see his, uh, his uh, obviously the House of El Crest on his uh, uh Chest, uh, I think you have, you know, you know, what I'm talking about. It's like one of the first yeah, photos. So talk me through that. Like, what was the inspiration for that specific photo? I mean, just the way the lighting was. Uh, I think it just showed how majestic this hero is, in a sense. So walk me through that a little bit. Well, I mean, you know, every every time a movie is made, generally, there's what's called a gallery shoot, where a bunch of images are made with the poster and some of the higher level marketing is going to be done, right? It's going to mine that library rather than taking it from day-to-day -day unit photography. So we have we have all the, the, the main stars posing for me for a change instead of for the camera, right, the movie camera. Yeah. And we, we will generate a huge library of imagery that, that will be flexible enough to be used across any number of art-directed works, right? At that point, they don't have a final understanding of how the po what the posters and what the final marketing is going to look like so we essentially just generate as many varied useful images as possible that image in particular however was was remarkably unphotoshopped oh, that's and I, amazing. I, it, there's a i think there's a tiny little bit done on the bottom of the you know the the crest just to kind of give it some just to fill in the point there, but but it is a fairly raw image that that I'm super proud of, and and I remember the um, the art director who was responsible for it noting as such, like, hey man, like that we didn't do anything to that photo. That's that's oh, straight, and, and and I love that as being a non sort of Photoshop manipulator. It's really fun to render these characters so realistically. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, that's that's probably my single favorite shot that you ever took. I mean, yeah, it definitely is one of the most beautiful shots of Superman we've seen. No, yeah. I'm telling you, I just that was my wallpaper on my phone for at least the entire day of 2013. Like that was just my wallpaper. You know, it never changed. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, man, it's awesome. I mean, it's just a look. That kind of light. That we, let's not kid ourselves. You could put almost <laughs> anything in that light, and it would be majestic <laughs> and, and striking. It bonus when it's super. Uh, yeah. Let's talk. Let's change the perspective from uh, you as a professional in the industry to you as a fan. So let's just stick on Man of Steel. Now I, this is going to be a repetitive question in a sense because we're going to go through each movie as like a timeline. But so when Man of Steel came out, it was at the time considered you know a little divisive. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I personally loved it. It's my favorite single superhero film of all time, personally speaking. But so t walk us through, just as a fan, what was your perspective of uh, Superman killing Zod or things that the general public seem to scoff at a little bit? Give me your take on uh, maybe removing yourself a little bit from the professional side just as a fan looking at this film. Like it's always hard to do that a little bit 
because I mean, even even when when Zod was killed, spoiler alert, right? <laughs> I um I, I I just happened to be in Michael's eye line. <laughs> so after after one take, he comes up to me, kind of still in Zod mode, tells me to get out of his eye line. But I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Well. <laughs> you know, so I'll always look at that scene and remember that. So other than that, look, I, I, I can say that a, a film that's divisive and spurs debate is what you want. I mean, that that might not be what studios want, but we as consumers of artistic culture, of, of, of cinematic enterprise, want things to spur, you know, for people to take sides and to feel passionate about something. So I say awesome. Yeah. It didn't. It didn't need to be some sort of feel good thing. And also, it, like he, it was the start of a long arc of storytelling. Exactly. And, uh, I'm, I was. I was into it. I thought. I thought ultimately that it was a healthy debate, and uh, and I enjoyed the film. To this day, there are images in that film and moments in that film that just linger, just because they're so beautiful. Oh, I mean, I agree. I mean, for us, I mean, I know me and Umar and Zian, we have so many times where we're just watching the film and rewatching the film and rewatching the film. Like, it just, it definitely yeah. just sticks, you know. And the dialogue sticks. I mean, this film came out uh, what six years ago now, basically, and uh, five years, four years ago now, four, five, how many years? I don't know, but. Yeah. Uh, it's been it's been a amount of years, and still, you know, you go on Twitter, and they're still arguing about it. They're still saying this is Superman, this is not Superman. I mean, it hasn't uh, uh, hasn't subsided at all. I would say, you know, the debate goes on, and I think that's very interesting. Yeah. It speaks to the legacy of the film that it's still being talked about to this day in a real debate, and where other films might have been forgotten and brushed to the side. This is a film that's still in the conversation. Yeah, amazing, and especially because it's a retelling of an origin story. I mean, this, this is that is impressive, and and uh, and I think look, it's because of the deeply aesthetic nature of it too. You can, it's sort of undeniable. You can you can nitpick story points, whatever, and various various things, but it's so deeply so well crafted. That, that that debate will continue. There's there's so much fodder for everybody's. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I completely agree. You know, it's like it's a testament yeah. to a great film that it, it sparks discussion, sparks different ideas and opinions, and um, you know to keep the conversation going and to drive uh, different ideas throughout the movie. And you yeah. know, speaking of divisiveness. Umar, why don't you, you know, take Clay to the next film on the list? <laughs> <laughs> well, Batman v Superman, I think we all kind of know that uh, that that was probably the one of the most divisive films of, of all time, almost. Um, personally, I, that that's my favorite movie. I've watched it probably, if I were to be honest, I've probably watched it already 18 or 19 times, and I just don't, I can't get enough of it. I just keep watching it. So, um, for me, obviously, that, that's my that's my greatest of all time movie type thing. So, I, you know, I, I absolutely love it, but I understand where the other side comes from. I just wanted to get your take. What do you think about uh, Bambi Superman? Well, I mean, I, I presume that you're talking about the director's cut and the extended yes. version. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for Definitely. sure. Definitely. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's where I think let's let's we have to distinguish then the divisiveness stems mostly from the theatrical release, and that and that is just a factor. You know, that's just the nature of the marketplace. I, I, it's they're damned if they do, damned if they don't, right? Um, yeah, for sure. In term, so th- there's 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 very set film lengths that determine whether that film's going to show you know ten times a day or twelve times a day. More times during that day makes video and it's is you that's just you can't win it so that's and and of course once the director's cut came out minds were changed suddenly a whole lot more people liked the movie so let's let's not get into the the studio challenges yeah <laughs> and just talking about the film all of a sudden the the actual film that was sort of intended but yeah. because of the markets, the market forces wasn't released. And there's no fault in that. I, that's just the fact. That's just the way it goes. We live in a time-based linear reality. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so the, so the suddenly Batman v Superman isn't as contentious once we 
once we deal with the film in its entirety. And and I just thought, I mean, look, at Bray, the, the the fun we had making it and the and the work that went into it. Uh, and it's it's a treat to watch later. And just again, it, it shares that same attention to detail, the the subtleties and the layers that Zach weaves into his films. Uh, I, I have no, I don't know if I could contribute more to this True. Uh, you know, applause. I completely agree with you. Ba- you know, Batman v Superman was just something on its own. It, it really showed us a beautiful look of, you know, superheroes in our world, you know, how the people would react, how the media would react. And, you know, that's what, you know, we got a lot of superhero um, movies where the hero is perfect and, you know, everybody loves him. But this is like, this is what we want to see. How would it be in real life if, um, if a man like Superman showed up on this planet? How would the people react and how the divide be? And Zach did a beautiful job showing these characters. You know, it was Batman's first introduction. Um, we had a lot of supporting characters like Alfred and... Um, also your portrait for Alfred I remember first seeing that when it came out and it was just so amazing the detail and like the the Ooh, black and white it was just so beautiful oh, you know uh, you know yeah I mean and yeah just, that's testament to Jeremy Iron the guy is awesome yeah, def- he's and, a legend and I think just just speaking on Zion's point I mean uh, I think some people are uncomfortable with a mirror being set on themselves in a way I mean in a lot of ways that's kind of what I feel Zach was trying to do and it's almost like you're seeing our world and sometimes you don't want to accept that that is our world and that is the cynicism of our media or the cynicism of our government or what's happening on a multitude of layers. Uh, I mean, I I don't know if you read my article. I wrote one article called The Ultimate Immigrant Story uh, which Zack Snyder shared on his Vero and where I kind of made a... I drew a parallel between uh, the Muslim American experience uh, in post 9-11 America to what Superman was going through. And it was something that I I was very passionate about when I wrote and how this Superman, unlike other Superman, this Superman feels much more universal, something that speaks to uh, a lot more immigrants than I thought they would. And I'm just very surprised by how warmly, in terms of like the minority response to this Superman, where, you know, there's one, there's one shot of just him coming down in the Capitol and you see, you know, all these different posters in the back. I know exactly I know what I'm talking about. You know, it's like Superman, yeah. uh, illegal alien or or aliens. Uh, Superman <laughs> is unchristian. Some weird like this interesting imagery that has so many layers to it. I mean, you can it's yeah. been almost two years and you can still dig deeper and deeper and find more stuff. I mean, just to give you an example, just two days ago, um, anonymously, we had a dreamer. Uh, submit something to our site and it was how Zack Superman gave this dreamer uh, hope and gave him something to relate to in a in a time where I mean now we're in post-Trump America where it's not easy to be a dreamer right now you know it's not easy and to get that anonymously was so powerful for me but also speaks to how powerful this film is so definitely uh, I mean this is just a powerful film that's all I can say Uh, uh, honestly and it's stories like that where if if those were the things that people talked about more, instead of box office nonsense and and rotten tomato algorithmic aggregation, we'd be you know we'd be in a really different place. But c'est la vie. Look, in it, and on some level, that's the way it goes. To the same way, there's a two-hour theatrical release, but there's a there's another movie entirely once we remove those time constraints similarly so there is another movie speaking to a huge word of people that that is to me far more important but, but harder to distill down into an article or even a you know to a headline or to a to a number and and that's that's to me that's awesome i'm sure in the history of art there's equal there's powerful art that was dismissed, but only with time does it does it, you know, become the thing they line up to see in a museum. Huh, and I feel. And do you think that a film like Batman v Superman? Do you think that it will age gracefully? Because I feel like it will age gracefully in the sense that people will come around to it. I think the way people see it, saw it in 2016, 
is not the way people see it in 2019 or 2020. I think the retrospectively looking back at this is what we got. And maybe it was something special. It was something that made a difference that maybe we didn't capture back then. But looking back at it, this was something. I think Watchmen had something similar. Where I think now a lot of people, you'll see directors, you'll see uh, people in the industry celebrate Watchmen as one of a kind. And to uh, maybe it's the timing as I said before, but people didn't exactly say that back then when it first released. So what do you think yeah. about that? Do you think Batman v Superman will go through a similar track? Yeah, look, I don't think Zach makes films that that will, you know, be forgotten. He he he's he's dumped enough layer and heart and craft and and sophistication into his work that none of them are going to be just be forgotten. To the you know, this isn't popcorn fare. Even though it's it, you know, superhero films are are thought to be so. He's he's almost sort of wonderfully hijacked the medium to make significant moving perennial statements about our time here on earth and you know i feel that uh, and a part of that just to add on uh it has to do with some of the marketing like sometimes you market a superhero film to be a certain way when that's not exactly what the film ended up being and again when you're challenging the medium of superhero content most people expect one thing. So if you're bringing everyone for seeing, oh, let's just see Batman and Superman fight for two hours. Let's get the big pop bucket of popcorn out. That's not what you're exactly going to get. You're getting something that makes you think a little more. And some people don't want to think. Some people just want to eat the popcorn. And that's not, that's not necessarily critiquing them. You know, They have their own style of movie-going experience. But because the superhero genre is almost has a wall of this is what a superhero movie should be, then when someone tries to change the status quo, then you see backlash. And then you see backlash from, whether it's backlash from the media, backlash from a certain number of fans. Look, I mean, it, on a lot of levels, it mimics so many aspects of discourse in our world today, right? And there's it's the echo chambers. It's the people's, people want to hear what they want to hear and then look to be reinforced with their opinions. And so... Yeah, I don't. It, it's it's a per, it's emblematic of our time, right? Batman v Superman came out, you know, shortly before <laughs> Trump v Clinton, right? Yeah. And, and <laughs> it's this is epic epic battles ensue, and partisanship and opinion and wanting to hear what you want to hear. So yeah, I mean, that, there's that's there's not gonna change it anytime soon and this is something i discussed I, discussed with umar before and he could speak more on it i mean it's this tribalism that's been created around the culture of superhero movies and of course like we said you said before that tribalism is everywhere it's in our politics it's in uh even our humanity on a very base level but it's just interesting to see it extend to even our entertainment and umar why don't you speak on that a little bit just you know that divide like how it was created and people i mean people get uh volatile over this movie uh obviously it's on both sides but there is like people are very passionate about it but to the point where it becomes like okay uh it's again it's very similar to this trump versus clinton like everything has to be uh this extremism on each side where you have to uh push it all the way and then you lose that gray area in the middle and that gray area is those conversations you know and i've had so many better conversations in person with people who might not like the film than i have on let's say twitter where people are you know <laughs> they're gonna come at you in a different way you know what i'm saying you know as far as batman v superman goes i think it's really a perspective of you know when you're really walking into that film and what i mean by that is like i have a friend and i'm sure he's gonna listen to this um you know, he went into his first viewing of Batman v, Batman v Superman. When he went in, he was going through a lot in his personal life. Um, and he went in there thinking that, okay, you know what? I'm going to get a lot of, because it's a superhero movie. And he didn't watch it, many of the trailers. So he kind of didn't know what he was going into. But he went into it thinking he's going to get very, a very hopeful, optimistic, you know, storyline. And, you know, he didn't get that. Um, and he watched it a second time. Uh, and a third time and then he 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 told me that he's like you know this movie gets better every time i watch it um and i find myself connecting to a particular character or a particular you know moment um 
a lot. And, you know, the monster scene, which is, you know, a scene that a lot of people make fun of uh, for, for, for a variety of reasons. But, you know, that scene to him, that was his favorite scene in the whole movie. For the whole movie, yeah. he was like, man, Batman realizing that he's becoming something that he's really, really not. Oh, well, that for him was was really, really big. Um, so I guess it really, it really, it's about perspective at the end of the day, you know, when you're really watching these movies and that's why when people don't like a certain movie, I, I understand that. Like I see where they're coming from. They might be coming from a very, very different perspective. So I get that. And then as far as Twitter and, you know, people going back and forth, uh, I mean, as long as it's healthy, I think it's good. But the second it starts getting personal and, you know, you start attacking people for for, for liking something which is you know this is art you know and I think Clay I think you'd be perfect to speak about this you know it, it's art right and a part of this is that it's subjectivity so just kind of talk about that a little bit yeah look as I said about Man of Steel when something is r- runs through an art you know an aesthetic artistic channel subjective interpretation all of that like and it, especially when it's contentious that's a sign that you've done it right, right? That it's, that it's stirring emotions. That, that's that's why, you, why storytelling exists, right? It's one thing to tell a bedtime story to a five-year-old. It's another to, to evoke the mythology, our modern mythology, using these characters to touch on subject matter that, that will potentially be disturbing or, or force you to look at yourself or you know, and I, so that's one thing, the, the way we discuss these things these days via social media and the rest of it just sets us up for a, just a minefield of logical fallacies, a whole different, you know, problem. Mm-hmm. So, so just staying on the artistic bit, when it's contentious, it's a success. And if you sort of, if you suddenly use that, it's your guide, not box office, not any we've got a nice sort of reframing of the whole thing. That's not to say that like a film like Wonder Woman, where, where everyone just loves it, you know, isn't, isn't also good, but, but you still need to ask yourself why. Yeah, and just to jump back to like the, the idea of preconceived notions, you know, people expect these heroes to be perfect in every sense, you know, always at their highest point, and Zach showed, perfectly, greatly showed these characters, in, you know, deconstructed, at the lowest points, and I personally, I love that about it because it's more it's more powerful to see these characters, you know, come back up, rise up from this from these low points, you know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I do. I think that that's showing a breadth of experience and sort of emotion is is to me a more that's that reveals more and makes those characters more interesting. And again, I don't come from the fan perspective. I just come from a human perspective. To me, that's more relatable than just being able to, you know, leap tall buildings in a single bound, so to speak. No, I, I could, yeah, I totally. Let's agree. get right into Wonder Woman. As you said, um, pretty much, pretty much, almost every single person I know on this planet absolutely love that movie, and they're they're watching it, they're showing it to their daughters, they're they're showing it to their sons. Um, it's it's definitely uh, a movie on its own, and especially with a, you know a female. Um, at the head of it all, also the director, Patty Jenkins, you know. Um, so talk a little bit about your work on that. And also, you were, um, you were a soldier, I believe so, right? You were a soldier well, in, in one of the... We were just having a little shot. Yeah, I mean, not, it, not really. We were I'm in deep background in the still photo that gets, you know, that's in that glass plate photograph. You can't see. I'm not there. I'm not, I don't end up even as a blurry smudge. But, but we were just having some fun that day. <laughs> Yeah. So, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, it's hardly a cameo. <laughs> but I was, it was a little tricky actually because I was trying to document the event plus run into the background for the photo. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe they. Maybe they could put you in something in the future. Who knows? Well, you never know. I mean, that's always that's always an option. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of opportunity for me to show up in Themyscira. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I um. <laughs> look, I, I timing is everything, right? And, and Wonder Woman is a fantastic, maybe a, maybe my favorite superhero. 
she she just because like superman you know she has this huge kind of moral compass that she can that she plays she works through and and she's got an emphasis on on love and i think those are really that's just really up my alley and and then given the kind of contentious world that we're in certainly in the united states and in not and elsewhere she was a she was a lovely sort of antidote to that and the story was an antidote to that i I don't i don't think the gender politics are as critical here i think that we when you see wonder woman i don't don't think you pay much attention to her gender necessarily you speak she she has a message that you can identify with and but I that, agree. Oh, yeah, definitely. that might be me no no oh, we no agree. for sure yeah, I, I think agree. that's no for sure i just think that because she, a lot of people make her out to be the first you know the first 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 and i think that's why people kind of focus on that i mean i think one there's one scene where I think where Steve, Steve Trevor says to her that, you know, this is no man's land and, and, you know, you can't get across. And, you know, that's a moment where easily, easily they could have chose, she could have chose to say, well, I'm a woman, I can do it, right? Um, yeah, but yeah. the fact that she didn't and the fact that she, you know, she, she does it, just it's a natural kind of kind of thing. Like, and, you know, what Wonder Woman, I think what did really, really well was it shows that power, but it shows it in such a way where, you know, universal. even men yeah. get on board and they're like, "Wow, this is this is something incredible." It's universal. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah love is universal. Like there, it doesn't it doesn't even know it doesn't even know species. I think you know, <laughs> she's so yeah. Let's and and she's just so awesome. And it doesn't hurt that the chemistry between her and Stephen were so, like the the film follows this kind of classic movie structure, and that too was perfectly timed um, in in the culture. It was a throwback on so many levels to the to these beautiful people in these beautiful places doing things that we can't imagine doing, right? But that's that's what a lot of people go to the movies for, and and it she she nailed it. And you know, let's move to a professional level again, back to your industry. Why don't you speak a little bit on the difference between uh, the difference between being on set for let's say Batman v Superman doing the photos. Uh, for those for the Trinity and then being for one room in solo film with Patty Jenkins. What's the difference between those two sets from your perspective? Oh gosh, you know, it's fun because I've, I've been with Gal. I was at her casting and then I was with her for, you know, that movie Superman and, and then Wonder Woman and then on the justice league. So I mean, like, I feel like Gal and I have uh, spent a lot of time together and what we said is we said it was really fun to watch her be the number one on the call sheet you know and uh, and to take on that role and and be wonder woman all the time um but but i don't i can't i must say sometimes it blurs in my head you know whether it was that first time when they were the trinity was together in bbs uh to her coming out of the trenches she's she's just such a great character that I just enjoy every time I get a chance to photograph it. And I, I agree. I think Gal has uh, done a great job with Wonder Woman. I think even the way the way we, they've introduced Wonder Woman to the world and back into the cinematic, the first time actually in the cinematic uh, level of art, I think we're basically, as long as things go well, I mean, this she's going to be Wonder Woman for a generation. I mean, this is something, uh, hoping, I mean, five, ten hopefully. years from now, she's yeah. still going to be Wonder Woman for... Uh, the next generation of kids, and it's going to be something big, I think. I think she has such a great potential uh, in this cinematic universe to go forward and just, you know, reach for the highest heights and take the character of Wonder Woman even higher. And, and just adding to yeah. that, you know, um, Patty Jenkins also, she's done a great job showcasing this character in the film and, you know, them two working together in the future for Wonder Woman 2, obviously, and hopefully even after, that's definitely going to be a, a sight to behold. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right, I think hoping, one of the songs... I'm hoping, I'm hoping a, they contribute. Let's see. Who yeah, for sure. Um, there's there's a song that I heard, um, well, not today, but I, I, I was just listening to it, and I think it's 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 Wonder Woman's theme in, in a way, where uh, I don't know who it's by, but it goes something like, 
um, to be human is to love, oh, yeah, that's the even when it gets scene. too much, right? That's the end. That song, song yeah. kind of captures her her vibe, especially at the end where she's holding the the uh, the tank, and you know, Ares is saying, you know, you know, kill her, and and he she's basically there's a moment where she's like, it's it's getting to a point you could see from her face that it's 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 really a very intense moment, but she chooses to like. To do the right thing and that that i think really speaks to that character and uh it's really a great start for her especially gal Gadot. i mean man she's she's wonder Woman walking so uh, yeah let's go more to come i hope yeah I'm, I'm excited as i say there's no there's no real objection the fact that it wasn't contentious right the fact like and everyone suddenly applauds it i mean i guess that's good but maybe maybe the next one will be contentious and so let's look forward to the let's look forward mm-hmm. to getting our teeth into it i would actually it. welcome it i would welcome something where patty jenkins just gives us something that's different and something that turns again people on their heads a little bit and that's what you want you want that discourse in a sense i mean of course so one roman's really a celebration movie which is great in its own right but like you said i think the sequel would be a great chance to uh delve into our psyche even more i mean the potential is unlimited really <laughs> as i say I, I just love her as a character i think wonder woman is my favorite the Aquaman's pretty badass too, so we'll see. And, you know, speaking of Aquaman, <laughs> let's transition a bit into Justice League, which is the latest film. Uh, before we get into the actual nitty gritty, let's just talk about how it was being on set with all seven he- uh, six heroes, uh, seeing everyone together. Like, how was all that from your perspective? I mean, you've been on this journey uh, from what twenty eleven, starting production of Man of Steel, all the way to. Uh, 2017. So, how was that process? Just seeing the culmination, in a sense, working with Zach yeah, yeah. at the beginning. You know that one shot where they're all there and it, the camera comes across. It was it's, uh, just for me on the day. It was stressful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it was like it was like closest thing to a wedding. You know, where you're like you got one chance here. Yeah. <laughs> where the you better get the kiss, or you're they're not gonna redo it for you. So. Uh, it, but but still a lot of fun, and I, I do remember there were a few folks on set that day, you know, that timed their visits, and, and it was our, just catching a glance or glancing over at them being in awe, you know, because there were some fans, and uh, making the, putting the cape on Henry to make sure we got the photo for posterity, all of that stuff. Was, uh, was a ton of fun, right? And yeah, a kind of a culmination but also just for me a little bit stressful stressful but then uh, as almost like again speaking on the culmination just seeing those heroes like i mean you've been you've been shooting henry from the beginning and now you're seeing him uh with standing with uh all these six heroes you know i mean you can make the parallels to jor-el's speech from man of steel where he's like you'll they'll join you in the sun and this is it you know this is when they're joining him in the sun so how does that feel just yeah. did you take a second yeah. where you kind of removed yourself and you're like wait a minute this is really it. This is the entire Justice League for the first time. Yeah, no, it was. There were definitely big smiles on my face. Like it, it, you, you, it's it's nerve wracking, but you're also thrilled, and I, I have vivid memories of that, which is telling of its significance in my life. Right, like you don't you don't remember every day on set, but for sure I remember that 10, 20 minutes where where it was all swirling around, and uh, you know, and and seeing each of the characters reveling in it as well. You know, Ezra. In his in his wacky and enthusiastic self and and uh, just the whole it was really really cool but also right down to the a camera first you know <laughs> getting a shot of him doing his thing so so the crane is moving across the, the gang you know the superheroes and he's right there keeping the camera focused and so he looks like another member of the <laughs> Of the league. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so I, I mean, it was fun to give him a copy of that photo. You know, that will be something he can show his kids. So it really does run the gamut, and I, I wish I could just live the life of a pure fanboy. But in fact, I, I'm always a photographer, and I'm always a bit of a bystander. And knew it, knowing darn well that those images and that that stuff was going to become fodder for for books and and the things that you can all see today. Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't neglect my responsibilities to just of course, totally of course. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely awesome. So um, let's jump back to your perspective as a fan once again. What af- what were your thoughts once you saw the final cut, the final yeah, sure. version of Justice League? Um, I, look, at that point, 
I was pretty well steeped in. I it, I had sort of lost interest in the. In the oh, like you know, I went to see, and to reminisce about my time on set, and I wasn't. I was too sort of jaded by all in the shenanigans on the back end. Yeah, that, you know, that's fair. That's fair. Um, and, you know, let me just there, jump off. Let me jump off your point for a second. Uh, you know, Justice League is an interesting film in the sense where, and I don't, I'm not going to tiptoe too much around it, but it's interesting in a sense the way the fans, the core fans, the fans that have been following uh, this journey from Man of Steel to Batman v Superman, there's a general feeling of a slight... Uh, I, I mean, I don't. I know you. It's not too much. You can speak on that end, but just speaking on the fan reaction. I know the critics were a little more lukewarm. I mean, they were more in the middle compared to the other films. But from the fan perspective, it was much more of a huge question mark about the film. You know, seeing it, and it's coming from me as well. I mean, uh, there's so many feelings I have about it, and it's there's so many layers to it. On my most basis basic childlike layer i'm like oh this is the justice league very interesting i like seeing the heroes but then the more layers you add on you're like wait a minute then you say wait a minute again then you say wait a minute again and it's only so many wait a minutes that can happen before you completely change your perspective on this film so can you speak just on i don't know again you can't speak too much into it but just as the fan seeing the fan perspective on it what can you say on that look i i, I it's fun because people who know I worked on it, say they love the movie, and others who say they, you know, they'd love to talk to me more about it. Some of them could tell that something had gone askew. They could, they, you know, claim to be able to tell who shot what and all that stuff. I mean, that's all, I, again, it's like that same problem. The studio, it's a business. And so that ultimately is what has to sort of be respected. And And I get that. I, I and and so and so there you have you have what the the business climate offers us. Is it in it, it, this time for a change that wasn't contentious because of some sort of storylines or something? They, it's just that all the other drama and all the other and the tragedy that gave this thing sort of was under a microscope. I, I think we should just allow it to be and then move on. And all this talk of Snyder Cut and all this stuff, just guys, no. We got to move on. Let's let's continue this universe. Let's let Warner Brothers get on its feet with with this universe. There's still so many stories to tell here with us now. Maybe it's not it's not the, maybe not the best film in the history of the world, but but it's going to be a launch pad for lots more. And let's take that let's take that optimistically. I mean, yeah. I mean, I agree. I mean, and that level. I mean, that's a good perspective. I think you gave a good lesson to. A lot of the people listening to the podcast and a lot of people who will, li- who will listen to it later on. I mean, uh, again, it's such a slippery slope because there's so many layers to this. But again, when you look back at it and you say, okay, this is a film that ended up making just a hair more than Man of Steel, really. And again, we don't want to get into the box office conjecture because then we're becoming exactly what the other people were doing with BVS. But it's just worth noting that sometimes like uh, there was a general mistake maybe or maybe there was a, a misunderstanding of what people will show up for or people won't show up for. I mean, again, I think I agree with you that it's time to uh, maybe move on. And I guess, you know, if you hate yeah. this, if you hate this film... You'll probably always hate this film. And if you love this film, then more power to you. You'll always love it. And if you're in the middle, you're in the middle. Uh, But I think that, like you said, I think everyone has like this Snyder Cut idea in their head. And it's, again, such a slippery slope. I mean, it's just so hard to uh, put a perspective on it because you don't want to go down this path where you don't know what exactly are you asking for and what exactly are the ramifications of asking for something like this. And even if something like this was like the overall point of it. And again, like you said, maybe it's better off to just leave it be. And if you're still a fan of the universe to see what comes next. Yeah, look, I mean, every, every filmmaker makes a, a film that they might think is terrific and perfect, but then it has to go through other layers. And then especially at that level of, of, uh, of rather, they've got, they've got other corporate concerns. And, and and that's not that's not a slight, right? That's just a reality. We 
I'm in the movie business because it's a business. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like if, I, if I had chose to make a bunch of like, if there's a Superman the indie, then then this can get a little more daring, and and that's fine. And in, in, in this day and age, where storytelling prowess is in the hands of you know a somebody with a with a thousand dollar SLR, more power to those folks. But in the in the giant box office world where there's consumer products and bed sheets and happy meals and all the rest of it that's a, that's it's hard to balance you know or tour filmmaking and so say la vie we're, we, right now superheroes command all the attention from the from those, those other corporate tentacles and and it, you can't ignore them one day, maybe when when you know when superhero films become, go the way of the western, and and they're just sort of these edgy little afterthoughts, you, you'll get movies like, uh, you know, the, whatever, uh, uh, Pale Rider, <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, and 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 then they'll stand out and they'll be awesome and they'll and they'll evoke all the things we want them to do. But right now, I w- I don't envy the superhero filmmakers. No, I definitely feel you there. And, you know, it's just one of those things. I mean, Umar, do you want to jump on something? Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I think because, you know, it doesn't, I, I think people, just like you said, I think it's it's time to move on. Um, I mean, that, that cut that people keep asking for, I think that's, it's, it is, it's time to kind of leave it be and uh, it's time to just, see what they're going to do next. Um, I mean, Aquaman comes out this year. Um, you know, see what they do with that. As far as the studio and all that crap, I, you know, I, I completely agree with you. I think there's it's there's a business aspect to it, and then there's the, 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 the aspect of people, you know, people that were on that ride for Man of Steel and, and, and Batman v Superman. And if anyone should understand that side of it, that side of... Um, you know that business side. It's the it's the people that love those movies because, you know, Batman v Superman, as we just we just we just talked about, had that. You know, we talked about the theatrical cut and 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 the director's cut and, you know, whatever the differences may be. But, you know, I I think it's time for the fans to move on. It, uh, and although we all love Zack Snyder and and you know we love the way he's made his films, I don't think there's a Zack Snyder film that any of us even dislike even a little bit. So, you know. It, it, it perspective is everything and it, it, it's definitely time to kind of move on and yeah and, and like let's just say now we have we, I was in Zach's office the other day and, and all all of the Justice League figure you know like one foot beautiful figurine there and like those, and if you love the Flash or if you love Aquaman now you have something that you wouldn't have had is that it that film might not be your favorite film of all time, but now you have this badass Aquaman rendering that, that and, and that's cool too. Like there's, a, there's so many other ways to celebrate these characters. Let's not get too hung up on the films. Similarly, right. They've rebooted. There's the new 52. There's this, there's that. There's, you know, they, that's so Batman kills somebody. Batman doesn't kill somebody. Blah, 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 blah. You know, all that stuff. Allow it just to be another wonderful rendering. Maybe not perfect, maybe not what you wanted, but of these mythological characters. I, I would bet that the ancient Greeks had had interpretations of Zeus, you know, like, oh, he should be jacked. No, he shouldn't. He should be genteel. And, uh, <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I completely agree. And Zach set up a great foundation with these characters, regardless of whether you liked or didn't like his movie. And now, you know, the future is bright. Now other directors can take these characters and go farther with them, go to new directions, new creative directions, and it'll be fun to see. Yeah, we're, we're like, like it's a great time for these, these characters and the, and, the, and the mythology of these characters to be explored. Every film won't explore every nick, nook and cranny, but we can just hope for more. I do wish they would come out faster, but that's the nature of filmmaking <laughs> these days. These yeah. things are, you know, these are giant operations, art constructions. And, and, you know, and, you know, I know you, you're friends with Zach and uh, I just hope, you know, I think he doesn't realize that, you know, people do really gravitate and really do love his uh, work. And 
we're all like all behind him. I mean, me, I think the, our family we're pretty blessed also because Zach uh, follows all of us on Vero, so we're kind of like uh, the Faruqi family in a sense. <laughs> we're we're being followed by him, but uh, I think he, I, I hope he knows like from all of us and from uh, his fans and from everybody that he made his impact. You know, and maybe the ending we all know there's shenanigans there's whatever you want to call it there's things that went down didn't go down whatever might have happened uh we do definitely all like support him and we all love him you know and wherever his project wherever his life leads we're all going to be following there you know we're all his we're all his fans you know and our i know our base our follower base on comic book debate i mean we definitely are all in on Zack snyder's work and we appreciate it. We write think pieces on it. If you go on our site, comicbookdebate.com, I mean, you'll see six, seven different think pieces about his films. And he's read a few of them. He's shared a few of them. So uh, I think just it's a testament to his work. I mean, again, Justice League might be what it is, but definitely for Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. I mean, and Watchmen also, if you want to add any of his films, but uh, definitely those three comic book films. It did, 300 and 300, also. yeah. So... Definitely those superhero films, like, he made his impact. I mean, I think that's... Whether you even love him or hate him, you can't deny that impact. And if you love him, you can just spend hours dissecting it, you know, like, everything that he's yeah. done. And, and and I was telling the nice guy cast, you know, got on, that, that uh, I don't know if you guys know him or follow him on Barrow, but but in a, in a somewhat private conversation just one-on-one when we were together i said look zach's going to continue to make films right and and while it may not involve be directing superheroes anymore a lot of the same themes a lot of the same layers and depth will continue to infuse itself into his his projects so while it may not it may not have a wonder woman or batman it will still you know, resonate hopefully with uh, thinking audiences. Yeah, and I think who knows, maybe in that, uh, maybe whatever his last photograph or Fountainhead or whatever the projects he's working on or has in development in his mind, uh, you know, I think that people give him a different lens to look at. And, you know, I think some of that microscope that comes with superhero films, I think if that eases off a little bit, I think he'll be able to flourish even to even greater heights. And I'm actually excited to see what he can do without the comic book genre. He's made uh, great films in his own right, you know, Sucker Punch or The Legends of Gahul, you know. So there's a lot of there's a lot of potential in his work, and we're all just excited to see what comes next. I mean, obviously, you and me both. That yeah, I mean, you and me both. I mean, <laughs> I know this is a comic book site and we and a comic book podcast, and all our most of our base is just saying, when is Zach gonna direct? justice league 2 and you know we're all you know trust me you know i'm the first one who's going to be in line if zach comes back for a superhero film but whatever you know the destiny has in store whatever god's plan is you know uh i think we're all going to be i'll be supporting him either way yeah no I, you and me both like i'll i i got his back and, and i look forward to continuing to work with him he's he's he and debbie are my if, if i were to work on a film they their films take precedent over anything else I would do. So I would I don't I look forward to whatever they do and being part of it. Yeah, definitely. And uh, like you said, we can give a little shout out to Vero also. Uh, just a great platform. I mean, I, we have so many of our guys on it. Or I think our whole all of our writers are on it right now. And uh, definitely, if you haven't signed up uh, to my listeners, if you haven't signed up for Vero, you should definitely give it a try. It's something. <laughs> Something new, something innovative, and of course, if you want to see, you know, some exclusive stuff from Zach, from Clay, from all these other uh, big names, from of course myself, I'm putting stuff on there. All of us are followed by Zach as well. So if you want to just get on that platform, it's going to be very interesting, and we're going to be doing more stuff for that platform as well. So just a quick shout out yeah, for the it, platform. It is, it is pretty much my only place, and, and that I would share things of that that mean something to me. And, and I think it hopefully it's the future. It's a it's a more human scaled, natural extension of our sharing spirits. Awesome, yeah. And uh, you know, just one question: I mean, are you still working on the films? Are you still part of the future of the DC universe in terms? Of, are you going to be there? I'm sure you've done work for Aquaman. Are you going to be there with? Uh, uh, are you doing work with, let's say, Shazam or for Wonder Woman two? Like, what's your schedule going forward to give insight? Yeah. To so. 
So I didn't work on Aquaman. Both Aquaman and Shazam are sort of new line Warner Brothers. I don't, I don't entirely understand the corporate structures there. Um, so I'm not part of them, though I know the folks on both, both, of course. My hope is to be part of uh, the next Wonder Woman and, and some other projects that are sketched in the future. I don't know where they're, what their status is. Uh, but I hear there's talk of a wonder, a next, another Wonder Woman, and I'd, I'd love to be part of. That. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've heard it as well. Wonder Woman too. Uh, let's just get a little more back to you, just personally. Can you speak to maybe some of your inspirations, like your favorite photographers, or what was, what's your like inspiration when you're doing, when you're taking a picture, or what you got into the industry as a whole? Any one particular well, photographer? Yeah. I on hashtag photo book inspiration. So, and the, I think I'm the only one who's really using that much these days so you can see some of the folks that i really admire oh awesome um, mariel and mark barbara norfleet i mean there's so many joel peter whitkin richard avedon there's there's i'm my i'm sort of deep steeped in the history of photography where where a photograph should sort of really resonate like a, the same way a song gets stuck in your head to me photographs when they're good stick in your head and it could be for any number of reasons right so so it doesn't have a particular aesthetic attached but that it it lingers and and a lot of the artists that kind of will if i see something in the world it might evoke them and i'll do my best to to, to kind of move in that space it's, it's hard i mean i uh, it's hard to talk about my own work and my own inspiration, but but I'm I do I do I'm sort of the worst at at thinking backwards. I just look forward to making uh, more pictures. All right. So oh. how about how about this one, uh, Clay? There's this one poster. I think my favorite part of the entire Justice League marketing uh, treatment was this. You know, this iconic shot of the Justice League standing together in this very yes. Alex Ross style. Uh, poster. It's almost yeah. literally taking the Alex Ross art and making it into a real life photo. Sometimes you're. I was literally in awe when that first got released. I was in awe. And I can speak. I know Umar and everyone. We're all. I think that was also our wallpaper for the entire entirety of the year. So speak well, on. That's still my wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's still your wallpaper. Yeah. Oh, so awesome. So speak awesome, on, guys. Look, I mean, if, remember, as I mentioned earlier, that that when you do a special shoot, a gallery shoot, there's a bunch of sketches by various art directors and firms that are going to bid to make the poster, right? So you just try and crank through as many images as possible to give them fodder for posters. But because I had seen that Alex Ross painting um, that, that actually Eamon Hariri uh, had displayed as part of his Impossible collection, oh, awesome. and, and that lingered in my head cool and the dramatic light, amazing painting. And I thought, well, let's shoot, let's shoot everybody like that. And just, just almost as an afterthought, made 10 or 15 frames of everybody in that light. It's just two lights, one up above, one below, with a little orange tint, and, and didn't think much of it, just added it into the mix. And it, I was as delighted as you guys when I saw the final product. And, you know, like, I, I know, what's your, what's your thoughts generally on, I know you shot a lot with Henry that got released after the film, and... I know a lot of people were asking you, I think even I asked you at one point, and people were clamoring that, <laughs> when is the Superman version of the poster coming out? And I know yeah, you've... So you've I mean, you, you understand that that just... That, that, put, put yourself in the heads of the marketing folks over at yeah, Warner Brothers. Yeah, exactly. They right? didn't want to spoil it, you know? The big surprise. You know? It's absolutely impossible. I, I'm, You know, obviously it exists, but, but we couldn't say anything. I wasn't certainly... I probably shouldn't be saying anything now, but you know what I mean. Like it's a, it, it, that is an impossible task. To, you can't yeah. show them, but you do. You show them, or you show them later. Maybe the DVD. I, I don't know what they finally ended up doing. I sort of yeah. They released it after the film. Like I think two, three days after the film released in theaters, they released an updated poster. Yeah, great. Look, I mean, again, that's of course it exists in due time. Oh, definitely, I feel you there. So. uh Clay, I'm going to keep you here for one second. I'm just going to speak very briefly on uh, one of our initiatives that myself and my brother are starting. I mean, we're lifelong New Yorkers, similar to yourself. And we started an initiative for Black Panther, which is coming out next month. And basically, we're going, we went to an a area in the, in the Bronx for you know kids from lower socioeconomic 
uh, areas, schools that you know normally don't have any field trips at all. So we wanted to raise money for them to uh, see the film with their classmates. So that's basically been our little pet project uh, on Comic Book Debate where we're raising money. So uh, when this podcast gets made into a YouTube video, the link will be in the description and we you know whatever if you share it uh donate what you can we really appreciate uh from our audience in two days we generated uh i think 200 300 and 40 dollars so we're doing pretty well moving up our goal and the school's very excited we i spoke to them uh the director yesterday and she told me that she can't even remember the last time they had any money to go on any trip so uh let's hope that we can get something going for these kids uh, again, the description, the link will be in the description uh, on our YouTube podcast. Uh, oh, I'm in. My, my brother's girlfriend is a teacher in one of those neighborhoods, and I would, I'm would i more than happy to share that link and contribute. Awesome. So link is on my Vero, and uh, so you can, of course, see it after the podcast is done. And one last thing, uh, we promised our viewers I have a free copy of Man of Steel to give away that I was going to give away on this podcast. So... Uh, we did. We ran the uh, what are the tweet into a generator that picks out randomly uh, one person uh, from our uh, follower base who retweeted it. And let me just pull the winner and announce it right here. Uh, the winner for the Man of Steel digital code is Mandy. The at name is Mandy Quinn ninety six. So if you're listening to this when it's out, uh, just shoot us a DM on Twitter or on Vero, and we'll I'll get you that code and you can redeem it so uh that's basically it so uh umar do you have any closing comments for clay i just want to say thanks for joining us man it's it's uh this is something that we started well shraw started this initially like four years ago we never ever in our wildest dreams thought that we would be sitting here talking to to you or anyone really um uh that important so Seriously, man, I just, I just want to say uh, thanks to you, and hopefully uh, hopefully you can keep coming on here. <laughs> you're, you're very welcome. I'm honored. I'd be happy to come on again, and uh, let's let's stay in touch, guys, especially let, when I'm back in New York. Let's, let's uh, rendezvous face-to-face. Oh, definitely. Yeah, man, yeah. It's definitely been a great honor having you as a guest, you know, to be able to pick your brain on your process and your inspirations and get inside of what you thought of these films that you've um, worked on. Oh, awesome, and I hope I hope everyone continues to enjoy the the genre and and films in general, and then those who aspire to be photographers just get out there and do it. Follow yeah, your passions, and, you know, guys. We're definitely looking forward to all your future projects, and for the audience, um, you can check out Clayenos's amazing work on his site clayenos.com. You know, you can see all his amazing artworks of different styles, different types. Go check it out. And then, yeah, and really fo- follow on Vero. That's the, that's where this stuff. Yeah, the, the, and definitely the follow him on Vero. Is coming out. And then finally, from myself, uh, I just thank you so much for, you know, I, I know I DM'd you uh, on short notice last week that you want to jump on our podcast and you were very gracious and I just appreciate it so much. Uh, definitely as, uh, as a fan of yours and as someone who's trying to build this platform and build this brand of mine and of, of ours, I should say, into something bigger and something more meaningful. And I mean, just to speak on it, comic book debate, I mean, we don't want to be that clickbaity, oh, uh, press this. We're all about the think pieces. We're all about people uh, having a platform for their passions. And that's what we made the site for. And, and the podcast uh, is an extension of uh, our leadership, of myself and my brothers. Uh, so having you as our first guest because the first podcast just was just us, the three or four of us actually. Now having you join us for this one, it's just such an honor. And I thank you. And I thank you on behalf of all our riders. I mean, uh, my riders DM me telling me that make sure you tell the Clay that we love him. You know, I think that was from Adesh. He said, yo, tell Clay that we love him, you know. So I'm telling you, we, we all love you, man. I mean, you're, you're part of the DC family. I'm telling you. That's how the fans see it. That's how we see it. Guys, I, I look, I should, should. I knew I knew you weren't clickbaity and I'd do this. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, man. 
So definitely, Clay, thank you for coming on today. Uh, definitely keep us in touch. You know, be a partner of ours uh, going forward. We have so much coming out. Again, if you want to follow Clay Enos, catch him on Vero. You can see his work on his site. Again, you can follow myself, Shiraz Faruqi on Vero, Zayan Faruqi on Vero, Umar Kamal on Vero. And he couldn't make it today, but Samir Hassan, who's our fourth in the family. We have like a four family podcast. Follow him as well. We're all verified, so you can catch us very quickly. And Clay, thank you so much from all our writers, from myself, from my brothers. Uh, see you around. Thank you. Yeah, if you're in New York, you know, next time we'll definitely have to catch up. Maybe over lunch or something. Yeah, coffee on us, man. Coffee on us. <laughs> I will. Uh, right. that just, and that just cleans up our communication. Great. Of, of course. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Clay. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Thanks, all right, man. guys. Good luck. Thanks very much. That was right. really lovely. All right. Awesome. Have a good one. Have a good one. Bye. Right. Bye. So that was just Clay Enos joining the podcast. We really appreciate it. And, you know, like uh, just speaking on from on the behalf of the site, I mean, we've grown a lot, man, the last four months. I mean, Umar, speak on it, man. Like we went from Twitter yeah, to yeah. site to podcast pretty quickly. Yeah, man, Twitter. I mean, I mean, you really started it. And then, man, it's just this past few months, it's just been growing, growing, growing more and more and more. And also per, our personal we all have our personal journeys as well, so this it's definitely a really, really fun roller coaster. And there's a lot of things that you guys, whoever's all you guys who are listening, there's a lot of things you guys do not know. Um, we we put a lot of work into this, and um, not only that, but there's a lot of really insane things that are coming that Shiraz won't let me tell you guys right now. But there's there's a lot of stuff that's coming yeah, out, and uh, I think yeah, yeah, the, the growth is definitely definitely, gonna, uh, keep, definitely a lot it's of gonna keep growing. Know. Definitely a lot of things to look forward to in the future. You know, it's been a great journey since we started two year, two three years ago, and um, yeah, the future is bright. And again, I know we're we're missing our fourth brother, uh, Samir Hassan. Uh, you know, he's been working on his midterm straight right now, so he couldn't make it for this one. But we'll try again for the next one. Uh, you can catch our podcast. Uh, it'll be on iTunes. It'll be on SoundCloud. It'll be on YouTube. And we'll all, you know, come together again after Black Panther to quickly discuss discuss the film. So we're looking forward to that. And, you know, on behalf of Samir, on behalf of Umar, on behalf of Zian, uh, and, of course, myself, uh, this is Comic Book Debate signing out. We'll see you on next time. Yeah.